generations have taken this hungry journey for the past 100 years, called by cravings and tradition to 61 Lowell Street in Manchester. The one and only, the original, the Red Arrow Diner. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Where regulars walk in with a wave, Red Arrow rookies get the bell. And I got Red Arrow first timer in this house. This person's never been here before. Let's welcome them. The row of red stools remains sturdy. The counter, like an old friend to lean on. Come fill your belly with food, feed your soul with conversation. Just like diners have done in this city landmark for a century. Totally unbelievable, it really is. We gathered the three proud owners at the end of the counter. Carol Lawrence taking the Red Arrow reins in 1987, along with her father George and Amanda Wibby. The generations that just keep yeah, coming here. Yeah, the generations. Here. It's, it's and, crazy. They, and they go yes. on. And the stories that you hear of my grandfather took me here, and they're, they're a grandparent now. And the big thing for me at eight, eight years old, eight, nine maybe, was to stop back at the Red Arrow and have a vanilla Coke. Their recipe for success, honoring the rich Red Arrow history. This is the original Lowell Street location today, and this is the spot where the Red Arrow Quick Lunch opened in 1922, right behind that wagon. The Red Arrow pointing the way for mill workers to find a reasonably priced meal. Historians guess the name came from the Red Arrow garage across the street. The man behind the legendary landmark, a legend himself, David LaMontagne. My dad um, bought a little lunch cart, I think, on Lowell Street. That's how it all got started. We caught up with his son, Ray LaMontagne. My dad was born in 1898. His father came from Canada in 1910 in search of a job. 12 years old to work in the mills. There were no child labor laws in those days. He worked in the Amiskeg Mills, delivered ice, and saved money as a boxer to buy the Red Arrow lunch cart on Lowell Street, soon opening new locations, like the Red Arrow lunch on Lake Avenue, beyond the barbershop, meat market, and confectionery company. David LaMontagne got married and raised a family with his wife, Mabel. Their children, Ray and Rita, were Red Arrow regulars. After going to the movies to see these cowboy movies we used to see every Saturday, we always would end up at the Red Arrow and we could eat our house out and not have to pay anything, which is <laughs> sort of a childhood dream. And then I started working there. The old menu offers a taste of the early years, 30 cents for a toasted liverwurst sandwich, 50 cents for fried clams, or splurge for the 75 cent special, tomato juice or fruit cup, fresh lobster salad, grilled sirloin steak with mushroom sauce, sliced tomatoes or green peas. Two fires ravaged the Red Arrow, the first in February 1946. The inferno left the Elm Street location encased in ice, along with a block full of businesses and apartments. David LaMontagne rebuilt. My dad had been in both Boston and New York on various trips, and he had seen something then called cafeterias. So that's the first time that the Elm Street restaurant became a cafeteria. When fire struck again here in 1953, the doors on Elm Street closed. But other Red Arrow diners remained open. In the 1950s, there were six locations in Manchester and Nashua. They've opened and closed here and there throughout the years, but one always keeps the lights on and coffee hot. The Red Arrow on Lowell, 24-7, 364 and a half days a year, closing only on Christmas Eve. I wish my dad would uh, know how important it became um, and has now become a legend in a way. The LaMontagne family eventually sold the diner. Ray went on to work with his friend, actor Paul Newman, at the Hole in the Wall gang camp for seriously ill children in Connecticut. He brought the Hollywood star to sit and savor the Red Arrow, where their nameplates still mark the booth. The diner is full of famous seats, wallpapered with snapshots of celebrities who stopped by. WMUR's own Ray Brewer even has his picture framed. You can find his favorite booth by the window engraved with his name. You find out that 
they're regular people. <laughs> you know, just great. Kevin Costner. You can't believe it. And she comes in for a while. She ordered uh, Twinkies for uh, Twinkies. Oh, Diane Sawyer. And Adam, usually like Adam Sandler, hometown Manchester native. He usually comes whenever he's in town. I think with Adam, him and his dad, that was a big bond because his dad loved the Red Arrow and took him here on Saturdays. And we have a plate named after his dad. Yeah, I um, Stan the Man. Stan the Man. That's the, we sell that more than anything else. It's our number one seller. Our number one seller. <laughs> Two eggs any way you want with bacon, uh, pan fries, and uh, coke. Other tasty staples have stood the test of time. Thank you. I like the old timer stuff, yes. like the number one hot hamburg sandwich. I mean, the, the pork pie is my grandmother's recipe. The baked beans? The beans are the original recipe. Customers come for the tried and true traditions every day. They line right up and uh, we get them in, we get them out. It's just like an auctioneer house, like, what do you need, what do you need, what do you need? And uh, people love it. The Red Arrow is iconic. Everybody step back, speak to the entrance. Guys, step back here, come on. Every four years, they see the spectacle when the first in the nation red carpet runs right through the Red Arrow. We've had a front row seat to the primaries for years now. diner goes back to the daily grind, serving those dreamy cream pies and blue plate specials, pinning up napkin art featuring mascots Mo and Dinah, the faces on the famous mugs of never-ending hot coffee, drawn by a regular named Mo. It's the mug. It's the mug and sitting here on the stool. You must sit on a stool when you go to a diner. I always say keep up the quality and consistency that the Lamontine family started in 1922, and that's what we all strive to do every single day. And the legacy continues, and I think that's why people keep coming. For 100 years and counting, to have a diner day. You have a diner day. What does that mean? You come in and you have a nice home-cooked meal, and you talk with your neighbors on one side and the other, and you're going to have a diner day.